Hey, Mike. Good looking F-150 you got here. What's it in for? Hey, yeah, it's not a bad looking truck. Custer brought it in. It's an 87 F-150. Uh, said it was running rough. It is running rough, and I believe we've got a misfire. Oh, I got you. Yeah, a misfire usually occurs when you're missing one of the three components to combustion, fuel, fire, compression. You gotta have all three to make the process work. You're right. What I found on the older vehicles, since you can't get a code to tell you which specific cylinder is misfiring, is to ground out each spark plug wire. Yep, because when you ground out each plug wire, it's going to power to ground rather than power to spark plug. You're right. Let's give it a shot. Awesome. We're going to use the test light to ground out each spark plug wire. The one that doesn't make the difference is the one that's misfiring. Go ahead and crank it up. Take it off. We actually have two cylinders misfiring, so we're going to find out which two cylinders it is and make sure we have uh, fuel and fire to them. Hey Mike, so what did you find out? It is misfiring. It's actually two cylinders misfiring, cylinders seven and eight. Hmm. Well, do you think it's fuel, fire, or compression? Still don't know yet. We're going to use the inline spark tester to uh, make sure we have fire going to each cylinder. Okay, how about I give you a hand? Great, thanks. Okay, Aaron, I've got the inline spark tester hooked up on number eight cylinder. I'm gonna crank it up. Uh, tell me if we're getting fire out of this river. Gotcha. We're getting okay. fire. Okay, we got fire. I guess the next step is we'll check injector pulse. Looks like you got a Noid light there. I do. We're going to plug it into number eight cylinder after we plug the unplug the injector. So uh, if you can, keep a lookout for it and see if we have injector pulse. Can do. All right, it's plugged in. I'm going to fire it up, see what we got. It's firing. OK, we've got fuel and fire. Now let's check for compression. Here, Aaron, if you don't mind, go ahead and get number eight spark plug out while I grab the compression tester. Sure. There you go. Great. A lot of fuel smell. It's definitely not burning. Let's find out which adapter we need. All right, Aaron, if you'll go ahead and screw that in there. There's a lot of ways to do a compression test. Uh, any kind of specification or book, technical manual will tell you to take all the spark plugs out for a correct, accurate reading. And they're right, but you can also do a quick test by just removing the spark plug that's misfiring and unplugging the coil and then spin it over about five times. You got it hooked up, Aaron? Got it in. Great. Uh, hook the gauge up to it. I'm going to remove the coil wire so the engine doesn't start. And when you get it plugged in, I'll spin it over. Okay. You ready? Kind of reading we got here? Looks like about 25. Yeah, that's way below specification. Um, we should have around 150 to 180 on this engine uh, with a variation of, they say, no more than 15 to 25 percent from the other cylinders. But at 25 psi, that is way below specification, and you're not going to get any kind of uh, explosion on that cylinder. Uh, looks like the next step is uh, take the head off and find out what went wrong. So uh, not a bad diagnostic on the F-150, was it? 
No, but it did turn a small problem that could have been of electrical or fuel into a major problem, which is compression. Well, we've got a problem now. <laughs> we've got to pull the cylinder head off and find out what's going on. We don't know if it's in the head or the piston, but we're not going to know until we pull the cylinder head off. And when doing that, we're going to need parts to go back together. Exactly. You're going to need at least a head gasket, exhaust manifold, intake gasket. Uh, when you go get the gaskets, uh, you want to stay with OE, original equipment manufacturer. Uh, they definitely produce a better quality gasket. The other gaskets are all made by aftermarket companies, and most time the OE manufacturers use those from them, so you'll be okay going that route. So, go to the manufacturer, say this is a Ford, we want to get the actual head gasket from Ford, and the other gaskets we can get anywhere else? Yeah, we can do that. Most of your OE manufacturers don't make a kit with head gasket and all the components you'll need, so you do have the option to go get just the head gasket at the dealer. Great, and it uh, should be cheaper to find the other stuff somewhere else too, right? Exactly. I know before I've done a head gasket on some Hondas and Toyotas that I had to go back after using the aftermarket gasket and put a factory gasket on it because the uh, aftermarket gasket for the head gasket would not work. Is that something that's common? Uh, yeah, that actually is a common thing when you go with an aftermarket gasket uh, as far as a cylinder head gasket. Uh, that will happen. You'll have sealing issues uh, between cylinders, oiling, coolant. Great. Well, I found out the hard way. I could have just asked you earlier. <laughs> So here we are. Uh, I guess that wraps it up. Yeah. We well, greatly appreciate you for tuning in to Auto E-Clinic. Remember, you can find us online at www.autoeclinic.com. Or you can also check, visit us or check us out at autoeclinic.com. Thank you, and remember, clowns are not only creepy, they also smell bad. They do. They stink.